Hi. One of my clients has got two dresses that needed rolled hems and it's a rayon. So I thought I would actually do a video on how I changed my genome into a rolled hem and the things that I do to um, make the type of rolled hem that I want for my client. Um, the first thing is that when I cut it, I leave between a quarter to three eighths of an inch um, from the original length. And the reason I do that is because usually most people when they do a rolled hem, they have the blade up on the overlocker. Well, I don't, I put my blade down. And the reason that I do that is because, particularly something like this fabric, you can see how it's already started to fray. Um, and what can happen with the blade up is that as it cuts, it can actually leave a little bit of that fray behind. And what I found is that if the blade is down, it tends to curl and neaten that fabric and give you a really nice smooth rolled hem. The other thing I'm going to do is um, at the end of this after I've done the rolled hem, I'm going to show you how I do a, a featured rolled hem. Um, so this would be, for example, this is the rolled hem that came off the garment and it's just a standard but you can purchase this thread, which is called Cameo. Um, it's a rayon 300D slash four. There's 200 meters on this. It is made in Japan. From memory, it's around $10 a reel. Um, it's not cheap. But what I do is I put it into the middle one and that gives me a really nice rolled hem. It's almost like a feature in itself particularly if you wanted to do something on a jacket or a dress or something um, or a top and you wanted to give a really nice finish. So I've got that in the black. I've also got it in the red and in, I got it in brown and in yellow. And you can also just use, if you want, you can actually use like an embroidery thread. Um, it doesn't give to my way of thinking, it doesn't give um, such a good finish as, say, these ones do. Um, but you can play around. I mean, I've got a few different types of threads in here that um, I've tried on my overlocker just to see how they go. You know, play around with it, see what it can do for you. Of course, it's going to depend on the fabric um, as to how it's going to finish. So anyway, let's get to, I'm going to bring the camera forward and I'm going to show you how to change this to a rolled hem and then I'll do the rolled hem and then I've got these off cuts so I'm going to just show you what this looks like on the off cut. So before I start, I do just want to say one thing as well. Um, when you cut a hem, you'll find that what happens, I took a photo of it, I'll put it up what can happen is that this seam can come undone and of course when you're doing a rolled hem you want that to be secure so what I've done is I've gone around and I've just caught and closed that bottom section okay so it's really important to do that because otherwise this will open out and of course you want a rolled hem all the way around so just make sure you do that alright so here we are with our standard overlocker this is set on three, three, and three. Sorry, three, three, and three. I'm not using this one. My overlocker is always set up as a three thread because generally what I'm doing with clothes alterations, I, I don't need this fourth thread. It just runs a straight stitch through the overlock. And that, of course, is very important when you're doing stretch sewing and all you're doing is just overlocking it. There's no seam involved. So you set it up as a four thread when you're, you know, making stretch pants or making a t-shirt and, and no other seam is involved. But when you're doing clothes alterations and you're taking in the sides of something, 
So say I take in the back of a, a garment or the side and then I want to overlock off the excess then I don't really need that fourth thread. So I move my needle over to the left hand side and I've got that set up as a three thread um, and it gives a really nice wide overlock. The same when I'm doing hems. Uh, it's In fact I think it's extremely important not to have that fourth thread when you're doing hems because what that fourth thread can do on certain fabrics is gather the fabric up and if it gathers it up it's not going to fit back up into the, uh, the leg of the trousers. So use your three threads when you're doing hems of any type um, and you'll find that that gives you a really nice overlock and have it in, on the left hand side. So what we're going to do now, we're going to change it to a rolled hem. Now, with the Janome, um, and like I said, all machines are different. If you have a really old machine, you'll have to change the plate. And on the bottom of the plate, you'll have an S or an R. So the R is for rolled hem, the S is for standard. And what that does is that actually changes the uh, needle up here. With this particular one, all I've got to do is move it, this pink lever from S to R. So the first thing that I'm going to do, before you can actually move this from S to R, this little pink lever, you need to lower your blade. So you've got to push that in there and then push that down. And just be careful with your fingers. Now that that's done, this plate will move out and that will move back to R. Now if I do that again, put that up there like that and try and move that, I can't move it because that blade's stopping it. So you just got to push that in, push the blade down and then I can bring that back to a rolled hem. So that's the first thing I need to do. The second thing I need to do is to move my needle because I like my needle on the left hand side when I'm doing my overlocking, I need to move the needle across to the right hand side. So, there we go. And don't lose any of your screws, it's important not to do that. So that's across to the right hand side. Now. Most overlockers are 4, 3, 7. I mean, I do it so often it's kind of like, you know, clockwork. So 4, 3, 7. That's the tension dials, okay? And then the next thing I need to do is I need to stay, change the stitch length. Now, I'm going to bring that to R. And the differential feed, I'm going to bring around to 0.5 or just above 0.5 maybe I'll leave it on 0.5 and we're ready to go so lower the foot give it a little run first to make sure that everything's coming out okay now you can see the difference between what it was like before and what it's like now Now I like to start at the back and finish at the back. And that way, you know, where you've got your little join. See how much it's frayed? It's incredible, this fabric. Okay. I'm going to bring the camera around so you can look at it face on.
how neat that is? Even though that was frayed. So there's the finished rolled hem and you can see how neat that is you know even though it was all frayed I mean I did cut off you know the excess sort of thing but you know that gives a really nice finish doesn't it. So that's a rolled hem on an overlocker. Because creating that special feature um, takes a bit of time for the video I've decided to break it into two sections so this is part one and then there's going to be part two. Um, so. I hope that you found this of um, value and happy altering.